and it looks like summer's finally here. Second week of August is what they promised us. Looks like they were right. Welcome to another episode of Colgonology. <laughs> I thought we'd do something a bit different this time and uh, do a Maker video and it's inspired by the Rudyard Kipling poem I read on my previous video uh, the one about oak, ash and thorn so we're going to make an oak, ash and thorn display case so I don't want to use live wood so I want to use dead wood so the idea is to look around the base of some oak, ash and uh, thorn trees and bushes and find some wood. As you can see, there's a fair amount of dead wood just lying on the floor here. Some of this is going to be useful. Of course, this will all be oak, which is great. Uh, see, nice little pile here already. Get those in the pocket. In fact, I think we'll, I think we'll get a bag going. Looking under this oak tree, I've just found these uh, little balls. Now, at first glance, you may think, hey, I found puff balls, but I don't think they are. The colour's wrong. I think they're earth balls. Let me crack one open in a minute. Yeah. Would you really want to eat that? I didn't think so. Right, let's go and have a look underneath some ash trees now. So here we are. This is a nice little grove of quite healthy ash trees, which is nice to see in these times of ash dieback. And as you can see, there's a bit of uh, ash wood on the ground already. So I think I'm going to be all right here. Let's start having a look around. Ooh, thank you, great art supplier. That's a nice bit. Look at that. It's got some beautiful ash buds on the end. We'll definitely have that one. So we've got a nice, lively hawthorn here. Lots and lots of holes on this one. Um, not seeing a lot of dead wood, though. And as I said, I don't particularly want to pick any uh, live wood if I can help it. No, that one's looking quite young and quite healthy. Can't see any dead wood at all. So no, that's not a good candidate. It might be that I have to go with blackthorn because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of dead blackthorn wood around. Not so much hawthorn, so maybe the thorn element might have to be blackthorn in this instance, which is no bad thing. They are kind of interchangeable. My art is dangerous. Look, can you see? Just there, look. Blackthorn. Ouch. Why is it that the smallest injuries hurt the most? I mean, I used to play a bit of rugby in my youth and uh, we had one bloke on our team who during a match nearly had his ear ripped off. I mean, it was literally hanging by a thread. Didn't bother him at all. But I saw the same person a couple of weeks ago get a paper cut and my God, he squealed like a stuck pig. Is it just a bloke thing? I don't know. Okay, so I've got a good haul of wood. Now I'm going to wash it. I think we can stop for a quick five minute break. Oh yes. <laughs> so I've selected three twigs that represent the three different woods, oak, ash and thorn, and uh, I'm now going to bind them together with some natural fibre twine. Oh, red kites out in the garden. Let's go and have a look. Uh, it may involve snipping a couple of the spikes on the black thorn to make it fit. So now what we have is a little um, the old-fashioned word was faggot, like a little bundle of sticks that they'd used to start a fire. But we've got a little um, bundle now of the three types of wood, oak, ash and thorn. So now we're going to put it in the frame. Now this is a frame, a cheap frame I got from a local hobby shop. We're going to take the backboard off and I'm going to paint it a nice blue, this chalk paint I've got left over from an upcycling project um, a couple of years ago actually. And then we're going to use hot glue to stick the bundle of sticks onto the backboard. All we need now is a label. So I've written Oak, Ash and Thorn in Courier. So it looks like it's typewritten. I do actually own a lovely old typewriter. Here's a photograph of it. Um, but unfortunately the ink ribbon's gone, so I can't use that at the moment. Besides which, I wanted the font to be slightly larger. So I've done it as a 14 point font. I'm going to print that. And then I'm going to strategically spill some tea on it to give it a bit of um, colour. Well, this is now dry, so we're going to cut it out. The thing is, it's to make it look a little bit hand-cut and a little bit messy, you see. So it looks like this. 
and I don't mind that it's a bit warped as well because that adds to the charm. Final stage of course is to put the label on, so let's get a little bit of glue here. Bear in mind, got to make sure that we get the top the right way, there's the hook. And we'll put... Do a little bit of repositioning. So there we go, the finished result. I quite like it. I did another one the other day as well, so I've got two of these now. Let's see. And here's a similar idea, but on a larger scale. This is a sort of mandala made out of hagstones. As you can see, they're all old stones that I've gathered over the years, found on beaches and walks, etc. And just arrange them into a pattern inside a box frame. That's it for today. Thanks very much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Toodle pip.